is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome to a new series, Intro to Adobe XD. For those of you that don't know, Adobe XD is a mock-up prototyping software which allows you to create prototypes for apps and websites and other similar things. You can see here that I have page after page for an app that I'm um, prototyping here. And not only can I design inside of Adobe XD, but I can also preview and publish a interactive prototype of said app. You can create interactions between pages, you can scroll as if you were on an actual app, and you can test out functionality for certain things um, that you otherwise wouldn't be able to do if you created this sort of stuff in Illustrator. Um, it's quite cool, it's really intuitive and quite simple to work with. What I'm gonna do is take this wireframe that I've made here, and I've already started building an actual color version of a prototype of what I think the app might end up looking like. This is a work in progress, um, and so please ignore any errors and things like that which you might see, or bits which might not look too fantastic. Um, we're gonna basically build a page today in this series, a new page which is gonna link to the analytics overview section, and I'm gonna teach you all about designing and all about how to link pages together and create an interactive prototype. So without any further ado, we're gonna jump right in and we're going to take a look at what happens should the user press the analytics overview button. So first things first then, um, we need to figure out how this app interacts and works with itself. If I just quickly show you what it does so far, there's just a home page and you can't click anything or anything like that. What we want to do eventually is be able to log in on the dashboard. We want them to be able to click the analytics overview button here and it should link to an analytics overview page. That's the overall aim of this series. And what I'm going to do is take you through all the design aspects first, and then we'll talk about um, prototyping and linking pages together a bit later on. Let's jump right in. So the interface for Adobe XD is very simple. It's designed to be a quick prototyping tool, not extensively over designing like Illustrator or Photoshop, that sort of thing. Your toolbar is down the left-hand side, and you can see it's quite limited. Selection tool, various shape tools, pen, text, and artboards, as well as a search, or a zoom tool. Sorry, not a search tool. Um, Aside from that, you have two options here for assets. You can essentially link assets together. So for example, I could select everything here, turn this into a symbol, and it would become an asset here that I could then re reuse throughout my design. For example, if I made this a symbol, I could call this menu, and then I could drag this onto anywhere in my artboard, and it would all retain the same sort of symbols. Apart from that, you've then got a simple layers palette as well. Honestly, I don't use assets or layers too much um, because most of the time it's going to be a simple setup that you're doing here, a quick wireframing process. On the right hand side, you have the properties, which is a um, dynamic properties panel dependent on what you have selected. For example, if I have an image selected, it's going to show me the properties for an image. If I have some text selected, like so, it's going to show me the properties for some text. In terms of the interface, that is pretty much it. There's two tabs, design and prototype. Design is where you design your page, create all the elements, and the prototyping, prototyping tab is where you can choose connections between artboards. For example, on my dashboard, should they click this small button here, this will slide out our menu overlay. And I can just quickly show you that like so. Okay, and you can create these interactions together. So let's just jump right in into creating our analytics overview board, and then we'll link the two together in a later episode. So. Back to my design tab, I need to create a new artboard. Now, when you create a new file, which I can just show you here, it's gonna ask you to choose between a prerequisite um, set of choices. You can choose between various uh, iPhone or Androids, iPads, anything for the web, or a custom size of your choice. What I've chosen here is iPhone X. So if I were to create a new artboard, you can see that I can choose um, from a selection. And if I click, it will just choose the default from that, which is iPhone 6. That's not what I actually want. I want iPhone X and clicking so will create a new artboard. You can also select an existing artboard and just like in other Adobe software, hold Alt and you can drag out to copy or duplicate that. This um, saves a bit of time for me because what I can do is then just select elements and remove them, okay? Now this is obviously too tall for a standard iPhone. You can see here that on our menu overlay, this looks like roughly, and it is, the correct size for a full iPhone screen. What I've done on this one is I've just dragged that artboard down to increase its size, 
and you can see that when we do so, we get this sort of blue tab along the bottom here. What this means is that is your folding point. This is your um, point where the end of the screen is on your iPhone. And anything below here, users will have to scroll in order to access, which is fine because that's what you do on a phone. I'm going to double click on the dashboard name here and I'm going to rename it to analytics. You can see from my other wireframe that should the user click on the dashboard, in the prototype view, it will link to my analytics overview page, which has all sorts of information on it. Okay, this is the page that we're going to be replicating today. You can see that I've got a header here where they can choose between different sections of the activity portion, which is where analytics lives. And then they have various overview analytics of different things that they've inputted into the app. This is just an activity tracking app. Okay, so simply then, I don't want this title to say dashboard anymore. This now needs to say activity. I also probably don't want this as my menu. What I was thinking to do was have when you select this, it would open up the side menu and that's fine. But I may want to consider using a different icon for this. And these are just some icons that I've created. Okay. And all my activity tracking is underneath the calendar icon on my app. I've decided. So I'm going to pop that here. What you can do <clears throat> is you can line this up on another page. So you know that it's in exactly the same or roughly the same area. So if I were to do so like that. If I then cut this from this artboard and paste it here, it will remember that positioning exactly. So you know you're in the right place. If you notice on our other artboard here, we've actually got some subheadings underneath. Okay. So I'm going to actually have to drag out my box here that I've created to make it taller. Now we'll go over adding new asset assets in a moment, but we'll just edit the ones we've got here. And this is very simple in the same way as uh, Photoshop and Illustrator works. You have your controlling bounding box. You can adjust corners by clicking and dragging all very similar familiar stuff, or at least it should be. Now I need to add these little subheadings because although for this tutorial, we're not actually going to create any of these other pages, which you can see link to these other pages here. What we're actually going to do is just create the one, but we still need to show that those other pages exist. Okay. So I'm going to need to create those subheadings here. What I can do is just go to my text tool like so. Click here and just choose um, type out analytics. Now it's important when designing for um, well anything really mobile or web that you stick to a grid if you'd like to. So which I do. So for this one for analytics, what I'm going to do is go with my artboard selected. Just choose grid. And that will put on a default layout. You can adjust this if you want to, whether you have five columns, four columns, um, you can adjust the gutter width and column width, that sort of thing. This just gives you a little bit of a guide to show you where you're going to start working from. OK, <clears throat> I'm going to turn this off for now. It's just important to know that it's there. Also note that it will stick to this even if the layout isn't visible. Um, but for now, we're going to ignore it. I want some text that's maybe 14 points in size. I'm going to make it bold. OK, I'm also going to make it white by changing the fill down here. This is all very familiar stuff if you've used any other kind of Adobe software before. Now I need to create the little bar underneath that indicates that we are on the page. So I'm going to do that with my rectangle tool. Very simple. I'm going to click and drag this out. And what I'm going to do is remove the border from over here. And this just leaves us with a white rectangle. Now to get the correct size, I know that I need four tabs for this section calendar, track, milestones, and analytics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out to be the full width of my artboard and give it the height that I want, maybe five, maybe a bit less than that. Let's try four. Four looks OK. If I drag this then to the bottom, which should then align to the bottom of my uh, rectangle here, you can actually do maths inside of your um, properties over here. So if I go to width, the width is currently 375, the entire width of the artboard. If I type divide four, which is forward slash four, that will give me a quarter. Now that's 93.75 pixels, which isn't really great. What you might want to do is change that to 93 or round it up to 94, like so. This does mean that if we were to duplicate this with Alt and Shift, it is going to overlap the edge slightly. But you can see that it does line up perfectly for you. You can see that some of these might overlap slightly like so, but it's better to create pixel perfect artwork and have a slight overlap than it is to create artwork that does something called sub pixeling. And that's when um, your artwork crosses over between pixels. 
like when you have something that says 93.75, there's no way on an actual render to render out 0.75 of a pixel. You'd have to pick an exactly one. So now that we have our four options here, I can just remove those if I want to for now, just so that I can start centering these two together. So this would be, if these were offset, you could align them together so that they're perfectly in the middle. And then I'm gonna push that to the edge of the page. Now that I know that they're perfectly center, I can start duplicating this out and change what this says. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this should say calendar track milestones analytic. So let's start changing that. Calendar uh, track and milestones. Now what I might do, we need to make sure it's clear and obvious that we're on this page of the um, app. So once I've finished aligning all of these to the center, with the align tool, what I'm probably gonna do is select all three of these pieces of text here and change their weight from bold to regular. I can align these back again because obviously once we've changed the weight, that center alignment is gonna be messed up. So we can fix that like so. And then what I'm gonna do with all of these selected is I'm just gonna reduce their opacity down to about 40%. Now, clearly that indicates that we are on the analytics page. It's bold and these are faded out. So we can select these we can hold Control G to group them into a single item. That just means we can select them together. And I'm just gonna position them onto the page so they all link up and overlap with each other, like so. The eventual idea being obviously that if a user tapped on any of these items, the page would transition over to the next one. Okay, that looks pretty good. It might be a little bit chunky for me. So what I might do is just select all of these. And this is where Adobe XD really comes into play with its um, stretching and sizing options. If you were to stretch this in um, Illustrator, it would do something like this. Um, excuse me, something like this maybe. Uh, but all of your text would start to get squashed and stretched. Whereas Adobe XD is a, um, <clears throat> a prototyping software, if you stretch things, it tries to maintain the original aspect ratio because the obvious choice is you're not gonna to want to deform, you're gonna to want to reposition. So I can squash or stretch this and it doesn't affect individual items on your um, artboard. It affects the positioning and scaling of them relative to their aspect ratio, which is really, really clever actually. So I can squish that down a little bit, for example, like so, to give myself a little bit of um, breathing room or indeed I could start to stretch out like so. It doesn't work perfectly if you select um, the wrong item, but if you select items that are relative to each other, it tends to work pretty well. Pretty well enough that uh, it gets the job done. So there is the header of our page, and we've gone through adding elements, ed editing elements, and creating artboards. I think that'll do for our first episode, and what we're gonna do in episode two is start to replicate some more complicated stuff here, like this analytics information. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stick around for episode two, and I'll see you all next time on TipTap. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.